and we say a big God bless you. This morning, without waste of time, we have the one and only Dr. Charles Apoki in the building. He needs no further introduction. The name Apoki resounds. the Lord. Jesus, we celebrate you. We thank you for dying for us. We thank you for sending a man to Africa to do your work. Lord, we celebrate the life of the Archbishop and all that you have raised through him. We we'll give you all honor and glory. We thank you for our young ones that are here. Lord, we need a new nation. Raise these ones as pillars that will build our new nation. We pray that the words will share. We go around this country. Our youths will live here with fire in their bones to create a change in this country. Lord, we cannot answer the ugly names that have been passed over to us. We cannot remain the poverty capital of the world. We cannot remain the open defecation capital of the world. Stir something in somebody's spirit this morning that will cause a change in this country. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I'm so glad to be here. I want to recognize the man that pastored me for many years. Reverend Blessing Okebuno. Okay, Please can you stand up, sir? Reverend Blessing Okebuno, where is he? He was my pastor at Ugeli. He used to travel all the way from Benin to come and pastor us at Ugeli. I celebrate your efforts, sir. I want to thank um, my brother, uh, Laifa. He heard I was to speak. He had gotten close to, driven out of town. He came back to come and stay with me and we've been having a wonderful fellowship. I also want to recognize if uh, Pastor Kadiri is here, Pastor Kadiri, I've never set my face on him. Oh, well done. He's my friend online and uh, he's here. I want to encourage you to go to my ebook shop, petrapublications.com or you can just go to Amazon dot com and look for Dr. Pokey's books, but more especially follow me on Facebook or YouTube and YouTube Dr. Apoki Charles. You'll see these messages more in details. I'll call Laifa up. Please come and stand here with the microphone. You'll help me read some things. I'm looking at youths as agents of nation building. Youths as agents of nation building. Please, I don't want you to scream. I want to be able to deliver what I have to deliver. You can stand here if you're close to me. Youths are the majority in Nigeria. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant and be wise. Has no commander, has no leader, but is able to store food for itself and all that. Listen very carefully. Our, our, our pastor, Lori Idausa, spoke about networking. One of the things youths will need to do in this nation to change this nation, to build this nation, is to network, to come together like the ants. Ants are very small creatures, but they can build a building that is up to 30 feet tall in the savanna. If you extrapolate the size of ants to the building they have built, that means human beings collectively can build a building that is 11 kilometers high into the sky. The ant colony is air conditioned throughout the year. So, if we can come together as youths in this country, we will do great exploits. But my generation, the wicked generation that has ruined this nation, that benefited from this nation, but are suffering you people, 
have known that if we can divide you by tribe, by religion, by whatever, we can continuously weaponize poverty to keep you poor. But your generation must reject it. Like as youths have rejected it in Sudan and several other places in the Arab nations and changed their countries. You are the majority in this country, but until recently, you have not been interested in politics. You have not been interested in voting. Edo State had an election that brought the present governor into office. There were people who were known as godfathers. There were people who were known as tigers and gorillas and whatever titles they had. But when the youths of this state stood firmly, even people who came from Lagos with money and came from wherever with money, the youths of this state were able to resist them and elect somebody they desired. I want to encourage you that outside God, politics is the next most important factor. Somebody defined, you know, I have a master's degree in um, public administration. Somebody defined politics. His name is uh, David Easton. He said, politics is authoritative allocation of resources. A man called Harold Laswell defined politics as who gets what, when, and how much. So if it, God is the supplier of your needs, government is the agency that sometimes can be used to effect that. You have stopped going to school because of ASU strike. Your prayer cannot resume schools. We have had enough of exposition in this country. We've raised very powerful ministers who are among the richest in the world, but we are still the poverty capital of the world. We've had so much exposition, so much falling down, so much anointing. What we need today is more political sense, more economic sense. I saw a young boy checking out from the hotel I stayed with his girlfriend. He most probably stayed in that hotel at the cost of maybe 16, 18,000 naira a night. And he entered the bike with his, entered bike with his girlfriend. You could stay in a hotel 18, 16,000 naira a night. Two of you used one motorbike to check out of the hotel. And most probably his father or his mother is hawking a camel somewhere. If we lack political common sense and we lack economic sense, God will not answer our prayer of stupidity. If we, if we allow thieves, if we allow political thugs and thieves to rule this nation, God will not answer our prayers. When we say politics is a dirty game and dirty people are ruling us, then we want God to change dirty people to produce. He has stopped doing such miracles. He gave us brain to take care of this earth. Now, I want to call Laifa up to read some, some things we saw online. Now, I will tell him to read some expenditures that are made in this country by your, by your politicians. Because you are the ones who are most affected by unemployment. You are the ones who are affected by the flawed educational institutions. You are the ones who are killed in the battlefield when you are sent into warfare with bad poor equipment, no food, no water, to go and confront more sophisticatedly equipped bandits. You are the one who joined the army. You are the one who joined the police. So, Laifa, please come and read some things for you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm into politics. And uh, when Dr. Charles Apoki started discussing myself and Pastor Saturday in the hotel room today to just go and do some research, I was very angry with what is going on. Let me just read one. Buhari, our president. No, start right. Okay, let me start with food. Food and travel, food, food. They are spending 4.8 billion naira for food and travel. The airplane where they they travel, now we get them. 4.8 billion every year. Now, now God did a chop, God. I mean, our food. That's one. They are to spend 100 million to buy fork and spoon. You know that shout. And you know this? It's not that they will buy it this year, then next year they will not buy it. If they buy it this year, next year, 
They will spend another hundred million to buy fork and spoon. It's not manufacturing company, no. Spoon, spoon. We will take the chop. I'll read another one for you. On welfare, welfare for Asoro a year is 1.7 billion. These are facts you can check. It's not, uh, maybe I'm just saying it. They are there on the internet. Then cooking gas, 27 million. Now, this is not just for, this is just for the president to, or see Bajor on that different. I'm serious, I'm not joking. Myself and Bajor Saturday were almost crying today. You never finish, oh. Make I read more. I never do, they never do, they, they read in Asura, they, they have library. They are spending 60, 66 million to buy books in Asura. Buhari, they read book. <laughs> not, not, not just that they are spending 66 million to buy books. They now say they want to upgrade the library. They will now spend another 25 million. This thing happens in every budget. Make I read more. I be make I stop. They now said after that money that they want to purchase new books. Guess how, how many million for the books? Did they, they, they read? They said they want to buy new books. 33 million. They will buy again next year. 33 million. <laughs> Make I read more. Then uh, this one, this one shocked me, shocked me. They said our president go spend 20 million for sporting activities. <laughs> yeah, 35 million. <laughs> Let me, you never have hear the other one. Then this year, see, that, that was last, last year's budget. They will now spend 35 million to buy sporting activities. 20, 20 million to do exercise, 35 million to buy the sporting equipment. Bawari, Bawari is strong, he's doing exercise. <laughs> Make I read more. This one will shock you. Before that, let me, let me read this one. Since 2015, President Buhari has borrowed 21 trillion naira. Now, this 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 will get more interesting. This will get more interesting. That means since he came into power by dividing calculation, he has been borrowing 10 billion naira daily. Are you still with me? Then the last one. Uh, if not be say that they watch me online, I would have joined our president to be obedient. But for political reason. <laughs> Should I be obedient? <laughs> All right. Local government. Governors. Do you know how much is their annual security vote? Should I tell you? 375 billion. Now that, that, that thing they call security vote in disguise is called pocket money. So pocket money for your local government chairman, your governors, whether APC, whether PDP, is 375 what? Billion. And I wonder why we are still, students are still at home. We need to be hungry. Praise the Lord. Come. Do you know, please, do you know that you pay house rent for Aso Rock? Yes, yes. You forgot that? Yes, I forgot that. Please listen. Where your president lives, we pay house rent yeah. for Aso Rock. Who get them? <laughs> Who build them? Who will they pay to? How much do we, are we? Are I, I, said, I was about uh, 475 million. For how many years? Annually. One year. 
for rent. For rent. <laughs> I can't remember the figure, but we pay house rent. Yes. So, you can go. Thank you, sir. These things are online for you to verify. So, if you like, if you leave your gun, carry ballot box for the people killing you. A state governor gets two billion naira. One of the state governors gets two billion naira every month for security votes. So the time he is leaving office after eight years, he will have 192 billion in his pocket. And it is not accounted for. It is pocket money. And your fathers that have labored for this country, their retirement benefits are not paid. And you are dancing and supporting old men that wear pampas. And you are supporting those who will steal your money and go and reside in other countries. If you don't arise as you and take over your country, I have done my part. Where I'm going to is nearer. I don't want to live two times the age I have already spent. I don't want to live more than a hundred years. That will be a problem to people. So, it is up to you to defend your nation. I wrote here, you are the ones who are most affected by unemployment. You are the ones who are most affected by insecurity. If you don't take your nation seriously, our children are schooling overseas, they are living overseas. It is you that is here. It is your future that is being stolen by the generation that enjoy the luxuries of this country. I had a swimming pool at Government College, Ugeli. I did not buy books. They supplied me books. They washed my clothes as a student at Government College, Ugeli. We had a laundry. They gave me detail, gave me locks, gave me tissue paper. I ate chicken at FGC Worry, ate Quaker Oats, ate conflicts. We did not need visa to go to the UK in those days. We went with UIID card. When I was in medical school, and before I came to medical school, the king of Saudi Arabia was sending his family to the UCH for treatment. But today, our presidents travel overseas for headache. They keep telling you, you are the leaders of tomorrow. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Even OB is 60, is 60 or 61 years old. When will your tomorrow come? When will your tomorrow come? Until you decide that enough is enough. My generation that has raped this nation and infected this nation with HIV will keep reaping the benefits for our children. Listen, their children are marrying themselves. Their children are marrying themselves. Before they privatize NNPC now, they had sent those who are going to take over NNPC for training more than 20 years back. Your name is not among. Your brother's name is not among. Are you listening to me? Their children and their, ch their, children and their daughters-in-law are winning elections to take over from their fathers. And you are here. They are always going overseas for the convocation of their children while you are at home. If you sell your vote this time, it's not God. Amadio I will slap you. <laughs> if your votes don't count, why are they paying for them? The time has come when Nigerian youths need to arise. This expressway, I was able to drive through it quickly now because the youths in that community blocked the express road. Fashola had to send for them, had to meet them, send somebody to come and meet them. Soldiers came, how many of them go fit kill? Soldiers came, policemen came, the road was blocked. Today they are doing it now. My generation, we are deaf and dumb. It's only force that we understand. It's only push that we understand. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Force is a product of momentum times velocity. 
if you can unite in this nation and get a critical velocity, this nation will change. Stop doing all nights and wishing that this nation will change. Don't ever invite me to pray for Nigeria. If you want me to act, invite me. If you want me to talk, invite me. But this nation will not change by prayers. It will change by action. And the, the ball is in your court. Why do you need to change this nation? You have the energy and the passion. You have the talent and the skills. You have the money. How did, we, did you people manage NSAS? How did you get food? How did you get scholarship uh, uh, money to give to people who, who were injured? How did you fund staying in that toll gate for days? How did you fund it? You have the money and the money is with you. Listen, you have the money to remove this oligarchy from power. One million youths contributing 1,000 naira every week is 52 billion. One million youths contributing 1,000 naira every week is 1 billion. Times one year is 52 billion. Times three years is 150 something or 160 something billion. It is enough to produce the president. It is enough to produce governors. It is enough to produce senators. If you decide to come together and forget the divisive forces we have used to divide you. Are you following what I'm saying? 150 something billion. And you volunteer. When um, Laifa was contesting under the PDP, he, post, he, post, he, put, he posted his posters. No Church of God mission member came out online to stand with him. It was when I came out online to stand with him that people started, Christians started commenting, Christians started commenting. You sit in your churches, they will come and kill you. They will shoot you. Didn't they go to a war to shoot them? Your brother was contesting. This time we are not talking about parties. We are talking about people. We are talking about people. When you see somebody who is competent, you as a Christian come out supporting. It was when I came out, Christians started coming and somebody was insulting a bishop online. They were criticizing him because he remarried. It was when I came out and I fired them, fire for fire, that his church members started defending. His church members could not open their mouth to defend their bishop. Then I called his younger brother to call the person that he was going to take the person to court. And the, the criticism stopped. And the media nonsense stopped. We have been too docile in this nation. It's not enough to come to church to shout. It's not enough to say, I receive. You will receive air. It is a time to stand up and act. I wrote here that you have the technology. You have the technology to galvanize and to mobilize. The greatest empowerment you need is networking and unity to take back your country. You must never allow ethnicity, religion, and regions to divide you. I always get angry when I see Igbo boys call Hausa young men cow, nama, aboki. No, it's not fair. It's not fair. That thing Baba Ahmed is a northerner, but he's intelligent. I made a post concerning the Igbo nation, which I will share with you. An Urobo boy opened his mouth to criticize them. I attacked him. I said, my children answer Igbo names. I'm going to have an Igbo son-in-law. I'm going to have Igbo grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Why will you attack the Igbo nation? All these your stupid comments on Facebook, calling people with tribal names. Poverty has no tribe. If you read the Apoki Two Tribe Theory, there are only two tribes in this country, the rich and the poor, the oppressed and the oppressors, those who have and those who do not have. There's no Islamic poverty, there's no Christian poverty. There's no Edo poverty, there's no Delta poverty. Poverty is poverty. Those who steal from you are united. 
When they want to steal, they steal together as Muslims and Christians. Those who suffer the consequences suffer as Muslims and Christians. There is no market for Muslims, there is no market for Christians, there is no market for Edo, there is no market for Robo. It's the same market. As who went on strike, all universities are at home. Then why do you divide ourselves, divide yourselves with the stupidity of my generation? When we want to deceive you, we will say this man is Ishakiri, this man is Urobo, this man is this. Go and check their background, even in Delta. The man who is still using Ishakiri against Urobo, his mother is Urobo. Their children are intermarried. And then we have divided you enough. Come together as young people, change this nation. Now, I quickly say this. In Igbo land, in Igbo land, I preached in a church. The general overseer, general superintendent, settled 14 boys. Those 14 boys became millionaires. I just left Abba. One of those boys that I know became a multimillionaire. Himself in the church service, when they said his boys that he, have, he has raised up should stand up, close to 10 millionaires stood up. So his master settled 14 millionaires. Only one has settled. When I asked him, he said he has settled 14 too. So if you multiply 14 by 14, it will give you the number of millionaires that have come out from only one general superintendent. And the man that, if you go to my blog, you will, my, face, my um, page, you will see it. The man was conducting a choir with 14 other boys. Those 14 other boys, he will settle them, they will become millionaires. That's why the Igbo nation is the sixth richest tribe in the world. So what do we need to do? If you are in position of influence, position of tr training people, position of mentoring people, take young men, take young women of character and competence, mentor that group, develop that group. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, which is the philosophy of my ministry, what you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men, who are able to teach others. Like if uh, you they buy land, no be so. You they buy land everywhere. Who you learn them from? That young man I said has mentored 14 millionaires. This is somebody who sold 24 containers of 25 million each, built a, a 10 flat building and gave flat as tight. Flat as tight. He has primary six certificate, but is ma married to a master's degree holder. In Abba. When, when he was talking, when, when I was preaching, the young men asked him, well, after singing, is this the man that taught you how to buy land? He said, yes. I told him, I learned from, Alex, from uh, um, Olorogu Hebrew. Buy land anywhere cock crows, it will turn to a city one day. So, that you are a youth and you are doing well, and all other ones around you are not doing well, when thunder strikes, it's easy to kill you. But when you are able to raise more people around you who are able to learn from you and progress, you will discover that you are able to build small, small units of progress around this country, and then we will do well. Form cooperatives. Form cooperatives. Form business cooperatives. If you form business cooperatives and you contribute money, you will solve a problem that is common with youths. That problem is lack of capital. When you form cooperatives, I belong to several cooperatives. Most of what we do in my family is from cooperatives. If you form cooperatives in the different units where you are now, 
That is what Pakistan, I mean in Bangladesh, has used to leave poverty, left poverty and left Nigeria behind. Cooperatives. Cooperatives are the major contributors to the development of nations around this world. The time has come for Christians. One of the biggest cooperatives in Delta State is owned by Christians in Ugeli. Ugeli Farmers Cooperatives is headed by Reverend Ima, Ima James. There's a cooperative in Ugeli that has an income that runs into billions. These circles have a, 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 a low and a low cooperative society. That's where they get money from to do businesses. That's the philosophy of the ant. You bring your little, little contributions, it forms a large mass. And if you apply my message of yesterday, of delayed gratification, discipline, devotion, dedication to duty, and you are disciplined, you will find out that progressively we are raising millionaires amongst us. The one that only one person is shining, it doesn't work. This place is illuminated and beautiful because of different lights shining. And the stupidity of saying somebody when they shine with my destiny, fire, you are an idiot. Nobody shines with your destiny. Shine your own destiny. When you shine your own destiny, it will not... Am I talking to somebody here? Any person will carry my destiny inside pot, fire. If your destiny can enter pot, then you are a vegetable. How can your destiny enter pot? Form cooperatives. Mentor each other. Form business conglomerates. I give you an example. Now that employment is not there, you studied physics, I studied chemistry, you studied biology, you studied English, you studied, studied mathematics. If we come, studied economics, if all of us come together and form a lesson group or a, a preparatory center, we already have an institution. We already have an institution and we can rent a building, bring collective, buy smaller phones instead of the big ones we are buying. Do shorter hair instead of the, the long ones we are doing. Don't buy bone straight. Let me just tell you about this bone straight. If you carry 450,000 on your head with half credit, 450,000 is 100 bags of cement. 100 bags of cement is 4,000 blocks. 4,000 blocks is a three bedroom bungalow that you are carrying on your head and your father is a tenant. Practice delayed gratification. You can form companies, educational companies. You can network internet skills. And network internet skills. Build companies. It is possible. The people who steal your wealth are the directors in the companies. You'll see the names of directors. You must see Ausa, Igbo, Yoruba, Delta. They can come together and fight your generation. Why, you, why can't you come together and build a future for your generation? The time of excitement is over. This is the time to face reality. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, as I gave you the Igbo model, it is replicable anywhere. If you go to a niche market, if you buy something from this shop, the next shop belongs to his cousin. Am I talking to somebody? Bread in Igbo land is produced by only just mostly one family. Our lady's bread settled somebody in Abba that produced happy society or high life bread. High life settled happy society. Happy society settled another person. So anytime you eat bread, you are eating from a family. It's not also like our families from some part of this country. If I call a family meeting now, most times it is poor people that we come. Why? Why? Many of you have this entitlement mentality that I'm owing you, that who, who we help, you don't help yourself. If you see the Lebanese, you see the Syrians, you see the Jewish people, each person contributes to the family growth. And as each family grows, the nation grows. You should not be the one that will be employed in a system and you will come late. You should not be the one that will be employed in a system and you will steal from it. The problem with us, 
some of us in this position, and maybe Harvey can bear witness with me, is that we are looking for young people who we can raise, young people who can help us grow so that they too will grow. But when we bring these young people around us, they want to become us immediately without the willingness to contribute to the growth. When you are, as, I, as I entered the NIA, I shouted, way, way. It did not start like this. I was the first gate man in my school. I was the first bus driver in my school. I cleaned toilets in my school as a medical doctor. But when you employ these young ones today, they are not willing to act. Recently, I was, I was standing at the gate, and one woman just saw me. I was controlling traffic. Just saw me say, come. I went and met her. She said, go call me HM. Me and Waka go call HM. HM say, now my guy, you send message, so say your mumu go kill you. The woman came down and knelt down. Most of you are too sophisticated and overpackaged to be helped. Too sophisticated and overpackaged to be helped. Your university degree is tissue paper and a receipt that you went to school if you cannot bend down and do something that can feed you. Am I talking to somebody? This generation, we need to carry our certificates and put by the side and start doing some things. Look at what you need to do in this generation. Learn skills. Learn businesses. Learn trades. That we do the following. Number one, take over what illiterates are doing and do them better. They did Bali Festival in Port Harcourt recently. Bali Festival. I was watching it in the news. That bole and fish that they roast in Port Harcourt. Graduates, enlightened people, turned it to something exquisite. Look for what illiterates are doing. Ado Eriri recently packaged a camu, and I advertised it, for, advertised it for him online. Powdered a camu, and people were ordering from the UK. Sonny Oyorokos is exporting fried snails and um, oven baked snails to the UK, to America. Snails. Anything that relates with the Department of Stomach Sciences, food, if you can put your hand in it and improve it, you will discover that you are solving a major problem and you are getting wealthy. Am I talking to somebody? Moody Africa made this dress. He went to government college, Ugeli. A street is named after him, a tailor. I went to supply with, to, with I advertised him recently on my, my YouTube channel. I went to supply up and down like this three with him when he came to give a lecture to a rich man in Delta State. Only three pairs like this. 800,000. 800,000. 800,000. And they did the shagwari or entertained us with 100,000. That is, and the drinks and everything, nearly one million for three pairs of clothes. So, forget your degree. Forget the philosophy you read. Who do you want to philosophize? <laughs> want to philosophize Buhari or philosophize uh, who? Forget the philosophy. Bend down. Learn a skill. My wife is a nurse midwife, but she cooks mama put. And to sell in my school. We sell bean spy. We sell meat pie. We sell egg roll. We sell everything. We sell ice cream. I'm a medical doctor. It does not matter. Put your degrees aside. Simplify processes for people. Make, save money for people. Make things smaller for people. So that I have a studio where I do my broadcast from. I carry it along with me when I travel. Somebody has designed a light that I can use power bank to use to illuminate me. It has a place where I can put my phone and then I broadcast to the world from my hotel room. Think, simplify, make it smaller, reduce costs, make it in such a way that it saves energy and saves time. 
As you do that, this nation will grow and you will grow. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Abby. This is the best message you can hear on a day like this. Do not forget that today is International Youth Day. Once again, let's give it up for Dr. Charles Apoki.